All right, thank you for showing back up again for this fourth installment of our video series about what in the world is Dr. Spann doing on Tana Island. I'd like to change gears and show you our family's history on Tana Island with mission work, which, as you saw in the last video, started in 1998. And in 2005, we decided to take our whole family. We wanted our kids to be mission-minded and serve other people. Uh, kids are the same everywhere, and uh, they still wanted to uh, read and play their games in the airport. This was the furthest they had ever been from home. Thankfully, that airstrip, which was under construction in 1998, was completed by 2005, and we got to land on asphalt instead of a grass runway. It was hot and humid that year, and came a monsoon rain. We rode uh, for an hour and a half across an eight-mile um, rough stretch of road and wound up in a, a tropical storm for most of the time, even sometimes having to sleep in uh, small puddles of water even with the best tents that uh, we could buy at the time. The capital city of Port Vila is not much changed in the big market other than that the market is a little bit bigger now, but they still have the same kind of wares and fruits and woodwork that they had then. You get around on Tana most frequently in ruts and mud, and even today when the roads are much better, you still have to pile everything you can into the back of a truck, and uh, a lot of the time you have to have help from the natives that are close by to push the truck out of a, a low spot or if it's rained uh, it can be a long afternoon my kids uh, we tried to get to to serve people not only in general but specifically even to the point of cleaning wounds and washing feet and this is my daughter emily doing that uh, that year uh, my kids have all been back two or three times since and um, sam here is carrying a gift chicken which is a very common thing when they show their appreciation and caleb was our uh, uh, resident mascot uh, recruiter. Uh, I'll guarantee you that it was hard not to want to bring some of these little babies home with us. Kids are happy to climb a tree to get fruit for you and uh, they are good tree climbers. And uh, my little Hannah uh, who's now going to college this year uh, loved the babies and she was a spectacle uh, in her own right and the natives love to follow her around and they always seem to be um, fascinated with her fair skin and her blonde hair and she had the time of her life uh, playing mud puddles uh, on Tana Island in volcanic ash just as well as she uh, would back home. At least it's easier there on Tana to grab a chicken since they're running around freely all over the village and she was proud that she had caught this one. That's our whole family then. You see that natives will come and wait all day frequently and I still take care of many of these ladies uh, and men who would wait sometimes 24 to 48 hours uh, sleeping on the ground. We still do medicine much today the same way we did in dark huts uh, and using headlamps just to get light enough to see to make diagnoses. Um, but my faithful Ruth nurse is still working with us there to the right and this is one of the toughest ladies I've ever met. Uh, we try to teach them skills when we can hoping that someday they'll have a native nurse and physician who can take over and work ourselves out of a job so that they're more self-supporting and self-sufficient rather than depending on Westerners for their medicine and for the skilled care that they need. This was a tight frenulum or a, a tongue-tied baby that we were able to take care of in just a few minutes with a lot of help. This was the largest surgery I'd ever done. It took five and a half hours. We took this 42-pound elephantiasis mass off of a lady's lower abdomen and groin. Uh, that elephantiasis on the left, you can see why the disease was called elephantiasis with those large, swollen, uh, rough-looking limbs. My job is spent much of the time going from hut to hut, and it's never boring. That's the best gas station on the island in 2009 uh, when I was able to go back after a two-year hiatus, and uh, we actually have a modern gas station now. The pharmacy that year was the front of a tractor and a front-end loader, and there's Ruth, as always, faithful to be there and help and uh, always uh, just glad to be with us. That's a clinic that was built in 2009, which Cyclone Pam destroyed. You saw pictures of that earlier, and uh, the people were waiting from the moment that we got there. This is the inside of that medical hut that was built for that purpose, and there's Ruth to the left. Um, and uh, I would try to write out prescriptions as best I could with Ruth's translation. You can see there that we have to use our... Um, crates that we take with all the medication for seating. My black bag still thankfully is doing its job 
uh, since I prayed over it uh, when I graduated med school in 1991. And even in the capital city, people crowd in for medicine that they have no access to even in uh, the most populous, uh, wealthiest place in Vanuatu. Any presentation that I do would be remiss uh, if I didn't mention a lady who's given uh, many thousands of dollars to the mission work and loves these natives like I do. This is Barbara Bosch. Uh, they're just on the beach uh, below our uh, little mission hospital in Lonangi Village. Uh, she loves these children and uh, the happiest I've ever seen Barbara was on Tana Island in 2005. She planted this tree and it still flourishes and even after Cyclone Pam which threatened to destroy it it's now growing back uh, and is approximately 40 feet across uh, and about 20 feet high. That's her husband Marty who's been a great help to me as well. He flew me uh, voluntarily to the International Aid Foundation in Michigan and they had a nice welcome sign up for us that day. Uh, this is the first time I think a white man had ever made coffee on a micro stove uh, for uh, the chief of this village and his family, uh, but uh, goodness knows we have to have our good coffee. This is the way on Tana that discussions are held, speeches are made, men rise and sit, uh, they'll egress and return to the center of a circle. This was a day that we opened up a church with one of my dearest friends in the world, Pastor Richard Hamlin and uh, Pastor Butch Mitchell and uh, we still do business this way today. Uh, that's Pastor Hamlin baptizing a man in a very small stream, but he did get him immersed that night, and you can see the volcanic ash falling. That's my son Samuel, who's been faithful to help me for many years, carrying uh, tons of uh, cargo for pastors and missionaries, and uh, he's always been uh, good to be by my side and always looks forward to going back and serving these people. Uh, he is now a seaman engineer, uh, getting his uh, advanced degrees at the University of Arkansas and uh, hopes that someday he can help build a hurricane-proof uh, cement home for us there so that we can continue to go back to Tana uh, weeks and months during the years to come. Um, this is the way we still travel. Uh, this is a more recent photograph. You can see the large banyan tree and uh, Pastor Hamlin and Samuel there. Uh, this is our 2012 trip with my family and uh, our pastor Will Thompson, uh, Sean Downs, Eddie Jack Mitchell, Anna Mickler who's now married with her own child, and uh, Sister Lorenda Harper who's now married to one of my mentors, uh, Larry Fincher, and uh, I hope that Lorenda can come back someday. It's now been seven years since this trip, but this uh, mission group opened up the way for a lot of work that's taken place since. This is the big plane that we get to take now, and uh, it's a lot smoother and a lot faster uh, with the longer runway and we're certainly thankful that we can have a little more comfort getting back and forth to that island. This is the modern gas station now and you see what it's like to pack for a trip to Tana with a group of 10 and doing a vacation Bible school. Um, it sure takes a lot of work and it seems like we never get packed up before 2 a.m. the night before and right now it's 1.53 a.m. when I record these final segments of these videos uh, but the time does get short and packed in before we have to take all this medicine and supplies and food into that island. This is the international airport there at Whitegrass, and that's our 2012 VBS crew um, and our medical mission crew. This is Chief Jack Alamoke that I've mentioned before, my dear wife Carrie, who's always by my side uh, when I went up to visit Jack's wife's grave in 2012 or 2013. Emily was our photographer in 2012 and look forward to when she can bring her husband Connor back someday maybe. Um, she is an adventurer herself. <laughs> I don't know how she got out on that tree limb. Uh, this is uh, getting ready to go from the domestic airport which is a lot smaller and uh, not air conditioned. And that's Caleb with his GoPro again and that's uh, off on another adventure down a dirt road going somewhere. Hannah was not happy with me for some reason that day, and that's her uh, in 2015 during the Vacation Bible School. And that's how we got there in 2012 uh, in a van. Uh, it looks like we're not quite as hot and humid this day. Uh, the kids always love to play football, they call it there, and my kids love to play with them. We always seem to have a group that tags along with us, and I'm so thankful that Sean Downs got to go before his untimely passing at 41 years of age uh, in 2014. This is Ali Moke's wife's grave uh, and I was a little bit overcome that day as I sat beside him and uh, he cried over his wife's grave. 
Um, but uh, that's part of the family responsibilities. You have to go and uh, weep over uh, the relatives that are passed. And since they've adopted me, I'm uh, obligated to take the part of a son in some things. Pigs roam freely, uh, but sometimes they cook them for you, just like here back home. And it's interesting to me that a Razorback hog is our state's uh, uh, school uh, mascot and that uh, Razorback hogs grow on Tana Island. This is a church service that uh, I led out in for Flatwoods Baptist Church, sending me out as a short-term missionary. And the kids are headed in to hear that short lesson. Uh, there's no lights inside, uh, but uh, you have to let the sunlight in just to get be able to read Scripture. Uh, some days when you forget your stethoscope, you have to listen to somebody with your ear pressed to their back. Uh, I treated this man for pneumonia and got to meet his son in 2018. And I'm taking the photograph of this. This man died since. Um, it's been approximately uh, nine years. And uh, he passed away a couple of years ago. But I, I found this photograph that I could take to his son. And I'm sure he'll appreciate that. The natives there are cut by the clevas or the witch doctors. And they spit in these wounds. And uh, those wounds have leaves rubbed into them. And I have to explain to them when I treat them with uh, good medicine that actually works then I'm not cutting them when I stick needles in their back and relieve their pain and uh, muscle tension. Uh, we do marriage counseling on Tana. This was a couple that's uh, been like family to us, uh, and it's about like we do in our clinic in Mountain View. Um, sometimes when you go to the airport, you have to pull teeth. Um, when I was about to get on the plane, I had a, plier, a set of pliers in my pocket as a multi-tool, and a man kept motioning me over, pointing to his tooth, saying, uh, uh. And when I finally saw what it was, I realized that his tooth was hurting. It took about 10 seconds, and I gave him some gauze, and I had to jump on an airplane to take off on that grass runway. This is the ambassador to the United Nations. Uh, we've gotten to meet uh, many people that uh, are prominent in government, and I hope to make uh, closer friendship with this man so we can cooperate better in the future. Uh, this was just before the New York City Marathon in November of 2016. Sometimes even doctors get sick on the way back. Uh, this was one of the uh, first times that I've ever gotten sick, um, but I had to work, and my, my nurse Melanie was able to get me an IV, and we were able to finish the work day. I want to leave you with this picture uh, of Carrie. Uh, I can't find a picture really in any of my archives that uh, kind of explains our relationship on Tana and her ever-faithful presence and uh, what it's like to do mission work there. And... Um, one of my favorite memories, uh, leaving this off and leaving you with that memory of, of Carrie's work alongside me to teach the natives and the ladies and the children is uh, what it's like to have to carry all your bags in a cyclone. This was Cyclone Cook in 2017, uh, but I can assure you that uh, when you're doing the Lord's work, uh, even walking in the rain a couple of miles, 1,200 feet down, uh, loaded down with about 80 pounds of pack, uh, is uh, not a heavy burden. We'll pick up with our last video, and that is why we go when uh, we resume on our fifth video. Thank you again for paying attention to this and for so many of you caring enough to ask.